Father God, <clears throat> open our hearts and our minds that the words we've heard from your scripture would dwell richly in us. May your Holy Spirit work in us today and through me in giving what you've given for today. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Now, you might have seen uh, in South America, there's this creature called the Jesus lizard. Has anyone heard of it? It's so named for its ability to walk on water, or more accurately, run very quickly on water, lest it break the surface tension and start to sink. It's a fairly small thing, and uh, the Jesus lizard has webbed feet that enable it to do this. And we can understand how this works by explaining it with the laws of physics. And then there's the true Jesus who walked on water. This physics cannot explain. If you and I were to try, we'd, of course, break the surface tension. We'd sink into the water no matter how careful we were. And sure, some might kind of skim over the water for a certain distance if they build up enough speed beforehand, such as on skis of some kind. Even a fast-ridden motorbike, you might have seen, uh, can, can make it a short way out over a, a lake before starting to sink through. But forget the tools and the toys. Try using your feet to do what our Creator made them to do. Walk. But on water? No. Today, as we gather for our annual general meeting afterwards, it's a good opportunity to consider what kind of year have we had? What kind of year have you had? For some, it may feel like you, like the disciples, are rowing a boat into a strong prevailing wind that is keeping you from getting to where you want to go. Others of us, I wonder, have we become frightened? Have we mistaken the Lord for something else in these uncertain times? After all, the disciples thought the Lord was a ghost. And considering our congregation, some may see a church that, perhaps like Peter, once walked on water, but has started to sink. If the Word of God is our sure foundation of truth, and if the Holy Spirit ministers to us directly through the Word, then how much more do the recorded, spoken words of Jesus bring us the hope and the comfort and sometimes the correction that we need? And so in today's text, there are three sayings of Jesus that speak to us today, just like they did that tiresome, hard-working night, rowing against the wind, making it to nowhere fast. Firstly, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. What are you apprehensive about as you consider your own walk with Jesus? What are you apprehensive about as you consider our congregation's walk with Jesus? It bears asking, are these apprehensions founded on truth? I mean, they might be. But conversely, has the enemy mingled error with just enough truth to make the lie sound plausible? The disciples were terrified, thinking a ghost was walking on the water toward them. We may face the spectre of an uncertain future. But Jesus assures us, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Secondly, as Jesus walks toward the disciples' boat out there in the middle of the dark, stormy sea, Jesus invites Peter to step out of the boat and walk toward him. Come, 
is a simple invitation, and, and this is the second saying of Jesus in today's text. It, in fact, it was Jesus' response to Peter, Peter, uh, who was so emboldened as to say, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Uh, and so Jesus does. Are you riding out the uncertainty of life, hiding in a boat, being tossed about like a cork on the sea? Or are you stepping out of your safety zone and walking toward Jesus as he invites you personally, come to me? As a congregation, are we walking toward Jesus, seeking to be where he is, even if we have to get out onto the water. And this brings us to the third saying of Jesus. Peter had just taken a bold, brave step of faith out of the boat. Uh, the water held. Uh, that's a miracle. As long as Peter's focus was solely on Jesus, the surface held and he walked on the water just like his Lord. But as soon as Peter started to notice things other than Jesus, like how darned windy and dangerous it was, he started to sink into the water. And so he screams out, Lord, save me. And of course, Jesus reaches over, pulls Peter back up and responds, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And that there is the third and final of Jesus' sayings in today's gospel text. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? What has you doubting today? What other things than Jesus have you started to focus on in your faith walk? Have we as a congregation become a doubting congregation? Is the gale force prevailing wind of circumstance defeating our trust? Are we starting to sink? Cry out to Jesus. He will reach out his mighty hand. He'll reach it out to you. He'll reach it out to us. And in fact, more than that, as soon as Jesus and Peter stepped into the boat together, did you hear in that text that Narelle read for us what actually happened that instant? The wind ceased. And so it is with us, hand in hand with Jesus. The storms either become navigable and tolerable because we're safe with our Lord, or sometimes he makes the storm vanish. The Jesus lizard is always in a hurry in order to stay afloat, but walking with Jesus is more laid back. It's an act of trust and devotion, not a constant hurry. It's a relationship where, where he is the only object and focus of our faith. May we not be so hurried as individuals or as a congregation that we miss this vital point. Jesus and Jesus alone. And so as soon as the wind had suddenly died down, the disciples on the boat, they had just one response, and it's a good response, and it's the appropriate response. In fact, in that circumstance, it's the natural response. They worshipped Jesus, saying, truly you are the Son of God. 
May ours, likewise, be a response of worship at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, at the feet that walked on water, the feet that broke the laws of physics, the feet that have authority over nature and the created order, the feet that walked a hard path to Skull Hill, buckling under the weight of a Roman cross, the feet that did that for you. May we worship our Lord at his feet. Amen. Lord God, nothing of our own we bring. Simply to your cross we cling. Lord Jesus Christ, we worship you, we adore you, and we love you. Only one thing is important, more than anything else. Through your grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, help us that we may not lose sight of that. In your name, Jesus. Amen.